guys and welcome back to my channel. So if you have been following me on Instagram, you know that I was part of the Helsinki Fashion Week this Friday, which is such an honor, honestly, and it was so much fun. I did an upcycling project that I will be showing you today as well here on my YouTube channel in greater detail because I only have one hour time and you know, you can only do so much in one hour. Nevertheless, it is a really, really easy and fun project for you guys to do at home. All you need is some sort of shirt that you can see over there that you don't wear anymore or that you want to spice up and then we can get started. So for the materials you're going to need rulers, a measuring tape, scissors or a rotary cutter, your elastic, pins, a marker, pliers, two sets of snap buttons and the tools for it and a hammer. And of course you're going to need your shirt. So mine is made out of denim so it's a thicker material. Mine has these kind of folds which is going to work out in my favor because it's just going to have this cool effect on the belt, the waist belt that I'm going to do with an elastic. Speaking of which we're going to need our waist measurement and what I did is just put my my fist like in between my waist and the measuring tape. Since it's gonna be a jacket you want to have some fullness in the waist belt. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually detach everything that is underneath my waistline from the upper portion of my jacket. So in my shirt there is actually a waist seam which I'm using as a guide to cut off the lower portion of my shirt. Now I'm not like undoing the seam and undoing the overlock seam and whatnot. I'm just cutting right through because it would eat so much time and you honestly don't need that one centimeter seam allowance. So just go ahead and cut it apart. When I was done with that I also cleaned up my edge so that I had a nice straight line to work with. Put the upper part that you just cleaned up aside for now and take the lower part of your shirt because we're going to use that part to cut out the belt portion of the jacket that's going to have the elastic inside. And what you're seeing me do right now is just like cutting into the curves kind of. So like more or less if you picture a pattern like the darts <laughs> um, to have a flat area to work with. That's the only thing that I'm doing. You do not have to do that if you don't have a curved hip portion on your skirt. I just had to do that so that I have a flat area to work with and the middle portion that is not cut into right now is what I will be using to cut out the belt portion now. And of course also the belt portion is going to have a button tape like the upper part of the shirt has as well. And we're going to end up folding the belt portion in half. So we have the facing and the outer side of the belt in one pattern piece. Therefore I am trying to figure out how wide I want my belt to be. I ended up going with around six centimeters because my elastic is going to end up being between five to six centimeters. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So my complete belt without seam allowance is going to end up being 12 centimeters wide and I wanted no buttonholes in the front of my belt on the button tape obviously because that's going to be really ugly and since I'm going to fold my belt in half the long way I was perfectly happy with having the buttonholes on the inside but just not on the outside. I really did not want any buttonholes on the outside of my button tape of my belt so I made sure to cut it out accordingly. And we took our waist measurement before and I just cut out a piece of fabric that was 20 centimeters more than my waist measurement with like my fist in between remember so that when we put the elastic in it's gonna scrunch up the belt as well and also of course the jacket. On the other side of the button tape where the buttons were I took these pliers to kind of like get the buttons out somehow. It left a pretty big hole but I was just fine with having no buttons in there and I was really really happy that I was even able to take out the buttons because I'm gonna use some snap buttons to close the belt portion and those buttons just really needed to go. All in all I took out two buttons in total and I cut out another area like this kind of small rectangle that I'm just gonna sew onto the other bigger longer portion for the belt with a fake fell seam that this shirt is using already just to make it seem like it's one whole piece but I needed this small rectangle because I had to kind of like diagonally cut out my belt out of this because of the curves of the hip and stuff so I wasn't able to make it in one piece. If you have a straight shirt you can just cut it from end to end and use that as your belt piece. I wasn't able to do that as mine had some sort of shape so I just kind of like faked it onto the other part using a fake fell seam. You're going to see me do that in just a second as well. 
but that's just an option that you can do if you can make it all around like if you can't use the lower portion completely you can kind of like puzzle together a piece that is long enough for your belt in case you're interested in more denim related stuff i'm gonna put a video in the eye where i'm making jeans actually i'm talking more about the special seam and stuff like that so go ahead and click into that And you guys wanted more cameos of Fuji, I built this cute little like kind of stair tower onto my wall so she can go on top of my wardrobes where I keep all of my sewing supplies. <laughs> so this is really cute and she actually went on top so she really likes her new stuff. Continuing on with the project, if you don't have an elastic that is wide enough, it can be kind of tricky to get a really wide elastic in my opinion. I only had three centimeter wide elastic and I just put them on top of each other and stretched them while top stitching to create this wider band so I went from 3 to around 5.5 centimeters width that is kind of perfect for my 6 centimeter wide belt portion I'm gonna sew them onto my button tapes on each side first before folding my belt portion in half and then enclosing the elastic into my belt and thus creating this really nice wrinkled effect Once I was done pinning the belt portion together, I sewed into the seam allowance just on the wider side of the belt. So just on the side that's gonna get attached to my upper portion of my shirt. Because on the button tape sides, I wasn't yet quite sure how to fix the snap buttons into place. Therefore, I left it open. You don't have to do that. Uh, you can just simply close it all the way because the snap buttons are gonna get attached through all the layers of the button tape. So I took two pairs of the snap buttons that fitted the color of the other buttons of my shirt and tried some placements out. And I figured that one and a half centimeters from the edge was the perfect placement for the size of my snap buttons. I'm using my awl to put some holes into my button tape. This is a pretty straightforward, just push it through and try to like wiggle it around a bit so that the uh, nose of your snap buttons can fit through. And every snap button honestly is quite different, so better follow the instructions of your specific snap buttons. And don't like go by mine as everything is like kind of different. But this is what I did and I just hammered the snap buttons in and use the placements of the first pair of snap buttons that I put in to determine the placement of the corresponding two other snap button sides. And now I'm actually closing the very front of my button tape where you can still like go in between. I also use that to top stitch my belt on the lower side, so on the hem, and also throughout the middle because that's just gonna make the folds just lay a tiny bit nicer and it's also gonna fix the elastic into place so that if you stretch it, it's not gonna like twist and turn inside there and gonna look awful. And we are almost done already. Next step is to put the belt onto the upper portion of your shirt. Pretty straightforward, just put edge to edge and middle to middle and sew along the 
complete waistline. In my case, the waistline of the shirt actually was wider than the stretched waist belt. So I just had to like kind of sew some folds into the waistline, which is totally fine because it's going to scrunch up and fold anyways because of the elastic in the belt. So don't worry if you have the same situation. Just try to put even amounts of shirt and waist belt together in the specific portions and you should be fine and good to go. Last step, I actually went ahead and overlocked the seam and also top stitched the seam allowance up just in case so that it's going to lay nicer and flatter because it actually really bulked up, especially at the button tapes. So if you have an overlocker, go ahead and use it. If not, on most of the sewing machines, there is actually an overlock stitch. If you don't have that, you can also always use a zigzag stitch. It has the same effect. It just prevents the fabrics from fraying even more. And that's it already for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel here on YouTube and also hit the bell so you won't miss any new uploads. I upload on Sundays, so you can keep an eye out for that then. And also, if you're interested generally uh, in sewing and pattern making topics like that, there are plenty of videos on my channel so you can click through and enjoy, I hope. <laughs> also, please follow me on my socials. The handle is exactly the same as here on my YouTube. So go ahead and follow me on Instagram and also on TikTok and check out my Etsy store. It's also at This Is Curry. So please go ahead and do that. All the links are down in the description, of course, as always. And thank you so much again for watching. I'm going to put a few videos of me wearing the jacket. Actually, we filmed the whole thing on the rollerblades and it was my first time being on those specific rollerblades, like the one with the four, like next two next to each other. I normally do inline skating, so I wasn't used to it at all. And it was my first time on those specific ones. So don't judge me, please. I, mm, eh, it was great. But it looked really nice, so I hope you enjoy that. And yeah, I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye, guys!